Hi guys, my name is Parker and I wanted to cover uh, Fluid Ninja Live, a little tutorial for you guys on use case 12A, driving fluid with particles directly. I love the idea of using Niagara particles to uh, drive Fluid Ninja components. I think it's really powerful. Um, and I wanted to just cover this just because there's a lot of things that can go wrong between appending a Niagara systems onto these volume smoke containers and everything like that. and uh, the documentation doesn't cover everything that can go wrong, so um, here I am making this video. Um, the first thing you want to do is create your own Niagara systems that you want to have used as a simulation, right? So I just created these two really simple vortexes. Um, we're going to use one for smoke, one for fire, um, and let's see how it goes. Uh, let's take the bonfire that's in the scene here, and we're just going to control C, control V it out, move it over here and put it in its own folder called a custom bonfire name it whatever you want though um, and then if we change the niagara systems that are in here you'll notice all these uh, user parameters uh, disappear right so we want to get them just to stay well let's duplicate uh, the default uh, niagara system bonfire and create another one that says custom fn uh, fn just fluid ninja uh, at least acronyms for me anyway but um in here, there's two things that are amazing. These two graphs right here. We don't even care about visualized particles. They're just additional fluff. Um, but these are the particles that are simulating. And then this thing reads the particles that are simulating. Um, and what we can do is we can take our bonfire custom, right? This little swirly vortex guy. And we can just control C this, this whole graph in here. Control V it in. And we want to plug everything into this hidden particle graph. Now, we could name this one the same as this one because this one if we scroll down here it reads that name and it just fetches everything that's on there but the camera query and the 2d velocity color are the two most important things about this node and for whatever reason when you control c control vm onto another node it, it just it just don't hit the same man it hits different it's wrong <laughs> or at least i find anyway it doesn't really consistently work the way you expect it to so it's easier to append a niagara system in here or at least i find that anyway so you can also see that it is offset underneath the world grid. Uh, that's on purpose. That's just because the um, the runtime uh, textures or whatever here, the render targets, um, you'll notice they're, 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 they're obviously squares, but if they were to start at world grid zero, uh, only the top half of the texture would be utilized. So that's why we offset stuff beneath it, just so that we get more of the square that we can kind of use. Um, obviously, if your particle system splays out in every direction, like an explosion, you don't really need to do the offset. Um, it's just for stuff that, you know, goes up and only up. Um, or down and only down. You would just do the reverse. You would go up and set down. Anyway, um, so let's try to apply all of this in here. The first thing is we're going to do is get rid of all of the motion. Other than set velocity 2D, 2D velocity color. We want to keep that. Um, so there we go. All of our blurple uh, particles aren't moving anymore. Great. That's what we want. Um, we're just going to take everything here uh, that isn't scale color, just because I don't care about color in this particular instance, and paste it in. And sure enough, there we go. Now, because it's got an offset on it, right, on the sphere location, negative 125, it's going to look a little bit different. Um, without that offset, it shouldn't really look any different other than the fact that, you know, our particles aren't lasting as long. Um, oh, and the mass is a little bit off, too, if I change that to, oh, whoa, ho, 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 let's change that back to 10, never mind. Um, some stuff isn't quite, you know, propagating in here the way that we expect. Well, that's okay. Um, we can fix it because we are smart. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take everything that's in here, control C, and I'm going to remove the, the sphere location and, and initialize particle and just control V that in. Boom. So that's now looking like that versus that. It's pretty much the same, honestly. If you look at that and then you look at that, it's it's close. It's definitely getting closer. Um, I think mass is fine. Oh, negative seven uh, is on this add velocity from point. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that that's carrying over. So that looks like that now. Yeah, that's looking pretty similar. What if I just increase the our particle spawn? Uh, our spawn rate to like a thousand. Yeah, looking good. I mean, it, it, it's it's a vortex. It's what can I say? It's it's doing what I needed to, right? So that is pretty darn close. Um, I'm happy with it. Uh, maybe the you know there's like a couple things in here that I you know like maybe the 
the mass is a little bit different or whatever, but I want to keep this because it keeps the that, that vector in there, so that's important to me. Um, but anyway, um, we're all good now. Uh, we should have put in everything that we need to. The only thing we got to do now is do the offset, right? So to apply the offset, oh, and we also need the shape origin to be particle position for the sphere for whatever reason. I do not know why, but that is what they set it up as originally. Um, so now we're going to take everything that we have here. Uh, let's add a offset to the sphere, negative 125. Let's do the same to point attraction force, negative 125. Same to vortex force, and negative 125. And then for the add velocity from point, negative 125. Cool. So now it's doing the same thing that it was just doing, but it's just offset negative 125 down. Um, those are all of the elements that I know that I can offset for my stuff, so that's pretty much all I should need to do here. Um, we should be good. Uh, initialized particles, all good, happy, happy, happy. So I can save this out, and now what I can do is in Bonfire, we can go to our Niagara system, we'll pick uh, custom FN, and what we also need to do is we need to create a render target. So right click textures, render target, RT, we'll name it Bonfire Custom. And then we want to point to it over here. Cool. And we're going to go inside the Bonfire Sim actor, which is the Fluid Ninja Live actor, uh, into Live Component, and then scroll all the way down, input render target, change that to the right one. And sure enough, let's also <laughs> let's also turn off our vi visualizer that we had on, right? Because we don't need that anymore, the lovely blurple colors. And give it a save out and play. And sure enough, something's going on, but you'll notice it's, what's this? It's clipping at the top, isn't that ugly? Don't we hate that? Yes, we do. Well, you can tell it's clipping just by checking the thumbnail here of the render target. Now, we don't want any particles to hit the edge of this frame. Otherwise, you're going to see that weird cut. It looks bad. We hate it. You could do it in a couple ways. You could just simply reduce the, you know, the particle lifetimes if you wanted to. Or, or there are some things that we can change in uh, the, uh, the the Niagara system here that will increase or decrease the size. For example, world grid extents. If we increase this, like double it, look at that. It's now a tinier uh, you know, it's tinier in frame, but it's, you can see more of the top of it, right? So if we did that, then, well, the more we do that, right? Like if, if, if we want a really long tail to the top of this thing, right? The more we do that, the slower and lower resolution this gets. And we can see this resolutions over here. Well, we can't change it here. What do we do? Um, if you go into the Niagara system uh, and into ca capture particle basic or whatever, Right here, actually, render target set emitter. You can actually change this uh, and increase the resolution if you need it. Um, if you don't, I wouldn't bother with it. Um, you know, performance is valuable to everyone in some way, um, unless you're doing sequence or cinematics, which, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, so I'm going to set it to 512 just for this particular use case, um, just so that we can see. Um, and then the other issues, okay, well, that's great that we got it, you know, to be a little bit better there and you know like let's actually even let's actually even go a little bit further just because I want to see the tops of those particles and eh, let's kill some of the some of the lifetime it's just going going too far for me y'all this ain't it chief uh, let's go to our initialized particle and bring that down to like 1.8 that should be fine save it out and let's see what this looks like now and it still needs a little further back let's do one point something else one point four how about that save that and see okay now we're talking so most of them are just fucking gone by the time they reach the top that's what we got that's fantastic um so now we don't see it you know chopping off at the top which is fantastic but it's super small we want it to be bigger well you can't change it in the scale here. What it's actually uh, referencing is the trace mesh from the Ninja Live actor. Uh, so you come in here, trace mesh size, that's changing it to eight instead of four, so that doubles it, right? Now it's double the size, cool. You got this nice tall vortex of fire going on, very cool. Um, but now we wanna get the smoke in here. So um, it should be pretty much the same process, but we're just gonna do the same thing, um, but with the NS bonfire smoke. Um, but let's create a duplicate just like we did before and let's name it custom FN and then take our bonfire smoke custom that we made our vortex 
and paste it into the custom FN that we just got here. So paste, cool. And then now what we're gonna do is paste everything in here right first, but uh, let's check sphere location. Sure enough, there's an offset. Let's just remove it for now. And uh, let's do what we need to first. Okay, so uh, we're gonna delete everything that isn't 2D velocity color. Boom, gone in the particle update section. And grab everything that we care about that's not color. Boom, paste it in. And then we're gonna take everything here that's not mass, delete it. Everything here, copy it, paste it, boom. Uh, and then we're gonna make sure that the anything that did have an offset here, like our add velocity for, from point, that comes over, negative seven, cool. Um, now it's pretty much good. Um, the only thing we need to do is just do the offset. Um, so come into our sphere location, change this to particle position, because I'm paranoid and I wanna do the same as the other one. I don't think that actually matters, to be honest, I'm just a weirdo. Um, Default and then negative 100. Um, once I do that offset, we need to do it to point attraction force as well, negative 100, and vortex force, negative 100 to the origin offset. Cool. And oh, and add velocity to Let's do it to him. Okay, cool. So now it's starting underneath world grid zero by a little bit and doing a little vortex swirl. Fantastic. We love it. Look at that. Perfect. It's doing exactly what we wanted to. Love it. Okay. Um, next on the menu, uh, I'm going to delete this that's in there because we don't need it anymore. Next on the menu is applying this into the particle um, reader or whatever for the volume smoke container. This volume smoke container changes things, ladies and gentlemen, because because why? Well, let's see. If we put in our smoke custom FN and we point to, uh, oh, did we make a bonfire custom smoke yet? I don't think we did. We made bonfire custom, but we didn't make one for the smoke yet. Okay, so render RT bonfire smoke custom. Love it. And change that to custom and then go into its sim container here or the ninja live actor blueprint live component all the way down and boom, we're gonna change bonfire smoke to bonfire smoke custom. And then the most important thing about this uh, is this apply second out mat to actors with tag. Also in Volume Smoke Container, you'll notice this same name is right here in uh, Actor Tag to get directly identified by Ninja. We can't have this name be the same on two Fluid Ninja blueprints that exist in the same scene. Otherwise, one of them is gonna reach the Volume Smoke Container Actor Tag identifier first, and it is going to steal it, and it is gonna be the only one that's running the smoke. So we have to go into the volume smoke container and we're gonna change its name to custom smoke bonfire. Okay, just any, anything you want really. Same thing uh, in the bonfire smoke. Oh, whoops, <laughs> I just did it on the wrong one. Let's change that back to volume because that's what it was there. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy here in this one here, volume smoke container, custom, custom smoke bonfire. Cool, and then in the uh, f um, fluid ninja co live component all the way down, here it is. Ac apply a second out mat uh, to actors with tag custom smoke bonfire. And now, ta-da, you'll see it's actually simulating and it's in there, but it's a little bit higher than we want it to be. I mean, hey, doesn't look bad actually for the current simulation that it's got going on. That's pretty sick. Um, but our Niagara particle systems were further down initially. So um, we can just move it by simply moving the uh, the blueprint itself, right? We move that down, and then boom, there we go. The smoke's coming out of the bottom there. Um, not that that really makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is like a maybe if this was a blue flame and this was like some cryo smoke or whatever, that would make sense. But um, but look, it simulates and it runs, and your whole mannequin or whatever it already has things uh, set up in it for it to collide with. Um, it's fantastic. We love it. Um, so yeah, that's how you get Niagara Particle Systems to, custom ones to run uh, with Fluid Ninja Live and uh, driving fluid with them. Um, I plan to make more videos. I wanna do some that's uh, using these in sequencer and uh, custom time dilation. Those will be the next couple of videos I make. Uh, but I hope this was really helpful to you and I hope it was able to save you from some of the difficulties that, <laughs> that I encountered. Um, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers.